someone waits for me. This is Ken Carpenter welcoming you to the Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, produced and transcribed in San Francisco. With John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Collins with the Bears and Bing's guest, Mr. Paul Douglas. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and we'll be groaning all night long after the big dinner. And now, here's a fellow who groans all year long, Bing Crosby. Hey, I, just, I, I want to remind you, I want to remind you something, Ken. When I stop groaning, I stop eating. Oh, naturally. <laughs> hey, you got a big Thanksgiving dinner planned for tomorrow, Bing? A Lucullen feast. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Crosby's will be coming out of the woods, out of the hills, out of the trees from all over. Nothing but Crosby. You really have a big gathering, don't oh, you? Oh, yes. And this year we're all going to get plenty to eat. Good. Brother Everett isn't coming to dinner. <laughs> don't tell me Ev's on a diet. Worse. Everett met with a nasty accident yesterday. He got shot. Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> No, it's accidental. Oh, accidental. Sure. Yeah. This year, Everett thought he'd surprise us all and provide us with our Thanksgiving bird, so yesterday he went hunting. Well, good for him. Seems that Everett was out in the country stalking the bird when, in climbing over a barbed wire fence, he snagged a vast hole in the seat of his trousers, which exposed a sizable portion of his red underwear. <laughs> yes. Well, a short time later, he's crawling through some bushes when another hunter behind him caught sight of that patch of red bobbing around the thicket. I think I thought it was a turkey. Hunter took dead aim. He let Everett have it. <laughs> He's getting along fine, recovering, convalescent. Uh, and I want to tell you, it's really wonderful to have the mob gathered at the festive board. I'll bet. The excitement when the turkey is brought in. Now, that's really a great moment. When they bring in that great, is. warm, Big brown, bird, yep. steaming bird. And then the head of the family, the breadwinner, the good provider, starts carving. Hope Gary don't cut himself. <laughs> We'd like to drop Thanksgiving now for a while in favor of Christmas. What do you say? Good. Musically, at least, because our opening selection is a song called Melikiliki Maka. It's a new Hawaiian Christmas tune. If the rhythm airs will gather around, and John, if you're agreeable, we shall head for the, for the islands. Hmm? <laughs> Melikilikimaka is a thing to say On a bright Hawaiian Christmas day That's the island greeting that we send to you From the land where palm trees sway Here we know that Christmas will be green and bright The sun to shine by day and all the stars at night Melikilikimaka is a wise way to say Merry Christmas to you. Green and bright, the sun to shine by day and all the stars at night. Melikilikimaka is a wise way to say Merry Christmas to you. Melikilikimaka is a thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Christmas will be green and bright, the sun to shine by day and all the stars at night. Melikilikimaka is a wise way to say Merry Christmas, a very Merry Christmas, a very, very, very Merry Christmas to you.
Thank you, Ken, and a Melikiliki Maka to you. Also, very happy Thanksgiving. Well, thank you. Say, Bing, that reminds me, I, uh, I've got a little tip for the thousands of folks who are going to a friend's or relative's house for dinner tomorrow. Well, I'm Ken, I'm sure our listeners are always interested in holiday hints. What's your suggestion? Well, I think it would be nice if those who are invited to dinner would take their host or hostess a little present. Mm -hmm. And the gift that everyone will appreciate is a carton of Chesterfields. Mm, Very good idea, Ken. Chesterfields make a wonderful gift. And then after dinner, after dessert, everyone could break out a pack of Chesterfields and make the Chesterfield mildness test. (laughs) Well, Bing, that's as good a place as any. You know, over uh, 10,000 smokers do make our mildness test every day. Now, seriously, friends, if you haven't made it yet, I'm sure it'll convince you, too. Make your next pack, Chesterfield. Then open them, smell them, compare them, and smoke them. Enjoy that milder, mellow Chesterfield aroma. Compare it with the brand you've been smoking. Your nose will tell you the difference between other cigarettes and Chesterfields. As tobacco men have known for generations, tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. So be fair to yourself, friends. Get with that Chesterfield mildness test. Prove to yourself... They're much milder, and they leave no unpleasant aftertaste. Join the millions who smoke Chesterfields, and you'll know how much real pleasure and comfort a cigarette can give you. The Paramount people are promising to release a picture soon, a thing called Mr. Music, in which I'm involved. Here's one of the ballads from the piece. The likes of you may never be attracted to the likes of me, but accidents will happen and I'll be around, and maybe there me around forevermore may never stop you may ignore my hopeful heart and chances are I'm not the one will happen after all A smile may show it Your eyes may glow Before you know it I'm sure I'll know So If you fall Just that way Oh, wouldn't I Be thrilled To hear you say I had a lovely Accident Today If I I may switch to a more floridly romantic vein, musically, I mean, here's a song called All My Love. This type of song is generally featured by such artists as as the street singer, Tony Martin, Tommy Lyman, Benny Fields. (laughs) Really, to sing this song properly, a fellow should wear a serape and carry a guitar, but I look like a chimney sweep in a serape. (laughs) I can't play the guitar, so if you'll be indulgent with me, I'll... I'll try it just in my regular wardrobe. All my love, I give you all my 
love The skies may fall, my love But I will still be true All my signs may disappear at last Now that you're here at last My heart belongs to you gentlemen, guest time is here, and if I do say so myself, tonight we have pulled out a veritable plum. <laughs> we have really hit the jackpot tonight in the person of Paul Dreamboat Douglas. <laughs> you know, Bob Rourke, the eminent columnist, and a man who is clinically close to Mr. Douglas, once described him, and I quote, as rugged a masculine type as ever you saw. He's got the voice of a rasp. A heart of gold, enough acting ability to keep him rich, and all the girls find him fascinating. <laughs> I close quote. No kidding, if this guy isn't riding high, I don't know who is. After great success in the Broadway show Born Yesterday, he ambled out Hollywood way and he established himself as a top flight star in his very first picture. On and on he goes, film after film, hit after hit. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present the greatest boon to moviegoers since the installation of the lobby popcorn machine. <laughs> Mr. Paul uh, Douglas. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, that was a nice introduction, Bing. Well, I thought you'd like it, Paul. It was a little short, but you got the <laughs> point over, I guess. Well, I tried my best. You know, Paul, we don't pay much money on this show, but, boy, we sure butter people up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bing, don't worry about the money as long as you keep talking about me. You know? <laughs> one thing I like about you, Paul, your great success hasn't changed you one bit. <laughs> Well, after all, why should it? I always knew I was great. <laughs> well, I'm sure of that. But, Paul, you've got to admit you were very lucky, very fortunate to yeah. rocket to stardom in your very first movie, remember? Letter to Three Wives? Well, there's nothing remarkable about that. You did the same thing in your first movie, going my way. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Paul, going my way was not my first picture. You made one before that? One. I made hundreds. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I never went to the movies until I got in them. <laughs> Doesn't it get monotonous, just watching your own pictures? Well, not a bit. I go because I like what I see. Frankly, Bing, <laughs> I think I'm a doll. <laughs> oh, doll. I said it. Doll. You are. You're a doll. You're just a great big teddy bear doll. <laughs> I'll bet every woman in the country would like to squeeze you. It figures. <laughs> Probably a few husbands would like to get a hold of you. <laughs> well, you know, when a man's in my position, he's got to expect a certain amount of jealousy. It's always been like that, ever since my days at Yale. 
Yale. You a Yale man? Well, certainly. You don't think I picked up all this class at a barber college, do you? <laughs> well, I should have known if I was thinking at all. Certainly, I... kid. I spent over two weeks at Yale. Two... <laughs> two... What happened? Were you ousted? Yeah, but it was politics. I suppose. Yeah. It was. Can you keep a secret? I won't blab a word. Okay. Rudy Valley was jealous of me. <laughs> Well, by the tables down at Maury's and to the place where Louie dwells, I think that was a dirty trick. Oh, well, I don't hold it against Valley. Rudy's done a lot for Yale. Well, he got you out. Didn't mm. he? <laughs> but, you know, I've, even those two weeks, scant as they were, have done, have done something for you, Paul. A <laughs> Yale man always stands out in the crowd, you know. I even stand out in the crowd of Yale men. <laughs> you can stand out at Mike Romanoff's. <laughs> Look, you know, Bing, the uh, average Yale man from my class is now married, yes. earning $26,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Follow me? I'm with you. Owns his own home and has two and one-third children. That's a clever trick even for a Yale man. <laughs> well, it's too bad you weren't in that class, Bing. The average would have gone up on everything. <laughs> Well, anyhow, Bing, both of us have gone a long way since our college days and mm. since the days we were struggling in New York. Well, you have. I'm still struggling. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, speaking of the old days, Bing, I remember one time in Studio 3 on the 21st floor of the old CBS building. Steady now. Let's mm. be careful. Well, all right. You'll remember. A limit, what was it? Uh, Lenny Hayton had the band. Yeah, Lenny. I was your announcer, uh -huh. and we were on the Chesterfield program together 19 years ago. Just a minute, Paul. Got, yeah. got to check you on that. Yes. Norman Brokenshire was the announcer on the Chesterfield program. Oh, but I was there. Oh, now I remember. You were the standby announcer. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. You see, I was there ready to go on in case Brokenshire showed up with laryngitis. <laughs> That's right. And you showed up with laryngitis now and then. Now, now. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Bing, by the way, do you mm. get laryngitis very much anymore? Very seldom. I feel too rough in the morning. It's murder, isn't it? <laughs> well, Bing, uh, while we're still yakking about those dear old days, I'd like to remind you of a little money matter. How much do I owe you, Paul? Well, Bing, do you recall one night while Eddie Lang was playing your guitar introduction, mm -hmm. you borrowed a deuce from me and ran out to bet it on a horse? I ran out to, to bet uh, uh, $2 on a horse during the program? That's right. Well, who sang my songs? Brokenshire. <laughs> Any way you look at it, you still owe me that deuce that you bet on the nag. Oh, Pa, say, well, let's just say it's a horse on you. Huh? Oh, that's cute. Oh, isn't that gay? That's a snapper, isn't it? I'm sorry, I never play the pony. Uh, let's see now. Oh, that's, uh, well, all right, $2. it's $2 for 19 years. Compound interest, can you figure it? You're you pretty owe, grim about it, aren't you? You owe me thirty two ninety. I can't pay you. Why not? Horse only paid four eighty. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. But Paul, we really had a lot of laughs in those days at CBS working for Chesterfield. Yeah, and just think, Bing, I was just a radio announcer then, and now I'm the biggest actor in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to that. You know something I was thinking? The way things happen, you know, a fella gets a break. It's a really a crime that you get into pictures so late. Really? Now, I don't endorse this following sentiment, but. There are those who seem to think that television is going to give movies a real kick in the pants. Oh, well, that doesn't worry me, chum. I, uh, you see, I still have the theater to fall back on. Well, to lose. Theater. <laughs> uh, legit, please. Really? Well, don't forget that I gave the most outstanding performance of the season when I first appeared on Broadway in Born Yesterday. Yes, and I recall an interesting story about how you got that part in Born Yesterday. Well, you it is an interesting story. I remember it, and I'd like to tell it. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to. <laughs> Uh, without interruption, Bing, you see, Garson Kanan, the author and oh, director... Good man. Oh, very good. Man of great wisdom and choice. He originally wanted Broderick Crawford for the role. Good performer. Yes, but he wasn't available, I if see. you know what I mean. Uh -huh. uh, he looked all over for the right actor, and one day he said to his wife, Ruth Gordon, mm -hmm. the fellow I'm looking for has to be a powerful, magnetic, outstanding performer like Paul Douglas. And then it hit him. <laughs> That's not exactly the way I heard that story. No? What Garson Kanan actually said was, the guy I need for this part is a big, loudmouth fathead like Paul Douglas. 
the string that's turned on? <laughs> it's alive. It's well, working. If it's working, uh, that's what he said. I'm sorry I took the part. Well, we're not sorry, Paul, because that show was instrumental in bringing you to Hollywood and to a medium where millions, millions can now appreciate your brilliant artist. Thank you, Bing. That was entirely called for. <laughs> Who called for uh, Just a minute, just a minute, friend. You know, there are those who say that I am as talented and as versatile as Clifton Webb. Oh, now, here, Clifton Webb is a great performer. He can play any kind of part. Are you implying that I can't? Well, all I know is that you've made seven movies, is that right? Yes. And in every one of them, you play a big, loudmouth fathead. <laughs> okay. Well, you see my next picture, 14 Hours. I just finished it. And in that one, I play a soft-spoken, sensitive police officer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I look forward to seeing it with great anticipation. Well, I don't want you to think, Bing, that I'm trying to muscle into your racket or anything like that, but I'm starting a picture next week that calls for me to do some singing. Mm, well, what's the title of this picture you're going to sing in? It's called The Guy Who Sank the Navy. And that'll do it. Mm. <laughs> well, I just had a thought, Bing, huh? on how you can square that 3290 you owe me. Oh, you're still thinking of that. Huh? Yes, 30... all the time. All my might. 3290. Well... What's your proposition? Well, if Anything I'm... reasonable, I'll, okay. I'll go for it. Now, if I'm going to sing in this picture, I'll have to lay some loot on the barrel head for vocal lessons. Yeah, inevitably. And if you'll give me a singing lesson right now, I'll cancel the $32.90. Paul, that's a lot of money just for one singing lesson. Mm, I can afford it. Go ahead, sing something. <laughs> now, watch carefully, because this is costing you money. John Scott, let's run through that uh, song, Nevertheless, while Mr. Douglas... Watch carefully now. The mask and yes. the, the bel canto and my tones and everything, the phrasing. It's very important. Very jelly. Yes, thank very you. Very <laughs> <jelly. laughs> That's the lesson A. Do, were you listening? You tuned in? Oh, maybe? you can yeah. say that again. You know, there's nothing to that singing, is there? <laughs> nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, Bing, when do you sell Chesterfields around here? Oh, frequently. You know, I'd kind of like to muscle in on a commercial. It's been a long time since I was Chesterfield's number one salesman. Well, you sure were, Paul. You announced on all the Chesterfield programs. That's right. Don't tell me a big actor like you still has a yen to be a radio announcer. Well, I uh, like to keep in practice, Honestly? you know. Sure, it'll oh, be something God. for me to fall back on when my youth and beauty are gone. <laughs> yeah. We'd love to have you join us, Paul, but 
You're sure you're not rusty? Times change, you know? Ah, uh-huh, yes, but Chesterfields don't. They smell milder and smoke milder just as they always do. Oh, this boy's on the beam. <laughs> you forgot something, Paul. They leave no unpleasant aftertaste. Of course not. The cigarette taste panel proved that. Right, Paul. The country's first cigarette taste panel, after smoking thousands of cigarettes under strict laboratory conditions, reported that Chesterfield is the only cigarette in which members of the panel found no unpleasant aftertaste. So, friends, get a pack of Chesterfields and compare them with the cigarettes you've been smoking. Your nose will tell you the difference between Chesterfields and other cigarettes. This lad's got all the latest stuff. <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> How come you're so happy, Paul? Oh, I listen to the Bob Hope Show, Bing. Eh? <laughs> mm. Well, I do too, you know. Yeah? Oh, I listen in every Tuesday night. I gotta hear that boy. It's in my contract. Yeah? <laughs> And he's got to listen to me, too. Oh, well, <laughs> serves you both right. <laughs> Every Christmas brings us a new song or two. Johnny Burke and Jimmy Van Heusen here submit one, which I think rather nice. I love that Christmas feeling Does my heart so much good? Strangers I meet all seem like friends, and the world's just a neighborhood. So here. To the joy of Christmas And here's to the ones I hold dear May you have that merry Well, thank you, Paul. That's a good tune. You ought to make a record of it. Oh, I have a record out on it. Matter of fact, this tune is, is out on a platter with the uh, four kids and myself singing it. Your whole gang has a record out now? That's right. Well, there goes the Fred Waring Glee Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fred, don't have to worry. That's the big league, Paul. We're no competition there. Well, it's, it's really been a lot of fun tonight, Bing, and I'd like to announce that I appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of an American gorilla in the Philippines, Starring Tyrone Power and Micheline Prell. What's the name of the picture? An American gorilla in the Philippines. Oh, what are you in there, Paul the Gorilla? <laughs> That's gorilla, oh, and I'm... I'm not in it. As a matter of fact, they're saving me for more romantic parts. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You do go over so big with the mm-hmm. ladies, I'm sure. I'm a doll, I told I you. A doll. <laughs> on account of me, and hear me good, Bing. I'm sure I'm doing it. Like all right, on account of me, women are throwing rocks at their boyfriends all over the country. Is that so? I tell you, I've broken up more romances than policemen's flashlights. <laughs> now this boy goes on. <laughs> What? Who's going to ham it up with you next week? <laughs> next week, Paul, Miss Ella Fitzgerald joins us. Also, that great jazz band, the Firehouse 5 Plus 2, will be aboard. That ought to jump pretty oh, good. Oh, this ought to be very frenetic. Mm-hmm. Well, good night, lover boy. So long, Bings. Are you? <laughs> good night, folks. See you next week for Chesterfield, the best cigarette we could have This is Sherman Billingsley, reporting for my store club in New York. Of course, Chesterfield is our number one cigarette. But if any of our customers like a long cigarette, I always recommend Fatima. They're the best king-size cigarette. It says right on the yellow pack, they're extra mild. And they sure are. Remember, at the store club, we recommend only the best. The number one Chesterfield and king-size Fatima. Bing 
Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, was produced and transcribed in San Francisco by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in next week and hear Bing and his guests, Ella Fitzgerald and the Firehouse Five Plus Two.